Hey, it's Ian from Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts again. Today on my left I have a service and a slight repair on a go-go folding scooter. Hi, so if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name's Ian. This is my little workshop here at Las Vegas Scooters and Lifts, and we deal with mobility scooters, power wheelchairs, vehicle lifts, and all that kind of good stuff. And uh, so, yeah, thank you for joining us, and uh, we appreciate it. So if you like this sort of content, give us a like, share, and consider subscribing. We appreciate that a lot. So let's crack on with uh, today's service. Yep, service and a repair folding scooter don't see many of these coming oh, last time i said that i said that about solex and we ended, ended up having about 400 of those things in but now go go folding scooter past customer of ours she loves this thing and she drives it a lot as it uh, as you can see so that's one repair and the other part is she's broken the the little tray that goes and covers the the wiring underneath the scooter got that to look at and a few other little bits that I'll probably come across but the main thing is in for a service so uh, we'll crack on and get this one uh, underway alrighty then let's uh, take a few bits off I think the first thing I'm going to do is uh, repair this for her I'll get some super glue on it and see if I can get this uh, back to some kind of shape to just help protect the underside she said she's gonna put some tape on it but let's see if i can repair it first let's have a look now we'll flip us around let's see what's going on i don't need that Alrighty. Now let's get the stupid glue. Let's see if I can put this back together. It's some kind of, I don't know. And there's always the best thing to do is replace them if they're broken. super glue on there see if this will hold it together probably not I just want to get something to smooth that out alrighty let's just smush this in here Grain gun on my finger. I'll try and get this side done. We blew on it. Activate it a little quicker. Missed. Not going to be uh, a permanent fix. Never. Super glue's good, but it's not that good. And I was thinking about those. Uh, metal things you can buy like a gun and you burn through the plastic and supports it with metal clips but this is really thin plastic 
Oh no, it's broken already. not holding it's really fragile I'll try a bit more You start bending it, it, it starts breaking away. <sighs> Super glue everywhere. Uh, try the old soldering iron tricks if that'll work. Probably not. Really thin plastic this is. Easy burn through it. Smoke from the super glue. Try this at home, kids. I try and stitching it back together. These are the kind of repairs I don't like doing because they're not permanent. They're the only break again. Probably when I pull it back on and put the screws in it, it'll probably break it, but that's as best as I can do. Looks ugly, but it'll do. service in it. What? That. The blue no, that. On the left. 
Kim's. Oh, I didn't know anything about it. No, you were gone, I think. That I'll get round to it at some point. The blue thing. Okay. All right, let's get on to this. Okay. Dokey. All right. Oops. I'm going to lay this down on it. Wheels. Oh, see, it's got like a retaining thing in there. Brute force and ignorance prevail. Uh, damn super glue everywhere. Okay. Now they have a retaining ring. I don't know if you can see that. Oop. Any ring that holds that knob in place, and then there's a a knot welded to it, so you can adjust the tiller up and down. And she's worn the threads away. I don't know if I've got another handle to replace it with. Let's see what I've got. Oh, yes I do. Yeah, this one's worn as well. I see a common fault with them. Looks like she's cross-threaded it as well. Oh boy. anything long enough to do it. Let's try this one. Uh, she's really cross right of that. Uh, put my goggles on. See what I'm doing. Oh yeah. I don't know if I'll be able to re-thread that. I'll give it a go. Otherwise you're looking at a whole new tiller. Which is not good. I haven't got a tap and die set. Keep meaning to get one, but I don't come across this very often. I can't really justify buying one. those threads up a little bit. Yeah, that's just gonna slip again. Oh, that one's 
button on how it is. And there's a thread in the middle, of pretty sharp. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let's see. Yep, that will work. So. Okay, let's unfold this thing. Okay. I need that. Okay. I'm not sure what that, that's about. Probably to hold that on. Loose armrests. I just want to tighten it up. Put the seat back up. Start with the little stuff. Thirteen, probably. Yes. Missing screw on there, got to replace that. Try these things. Okay, I found something that'll work on there. It's not pretty, but it holds the uh, armrest pad on. Just tighten those up. This one's nice and tight. Tighten these. Make sure they're nice and level. Yep. Remove this. Clean that off. Okay, so this one is a lithium battery one. And the way you can tell is it has the key on the battery box. You can see that. She's had this a couple of years now. It's unlocked and that's locked. These are expensive to replace. So, 
be careful with them, they're expensive. Okay. So let's see. Tiller's done. Yep, they're in place. That's they're loose. Uh, that needs a dressing. This one looks like it's all over the place. Hmm. I'm just going to put a cable clip on, a cable tie on there. Just tie these wires back. Just save for future problems. I think it's for the back light. white shroud to get in to tighten that one, which is a bit of a dick but, uh, yeah, I'll clean that up spray some degreaser on it so, yeah looking pretty good wheel spin pretty good no noise from the bearing and there's just your anti-tip wheels at the side so when it's stood up use it to roll it around like a piece of luggage. Caps are on. They're just on a bolt.
friend of mine. Okay, back at it. It's cold outside. Yeah, I've had some good questions in the comments. I've had the obligatory can I make it go faster comment. But it doesn't hurt to ask. You don't know unless you ask. Gets me thinking about could you make them go faster? And how could you make them go faster? It gets my brain ticking. I was thinking about battery packs. Wondering if um, if you could fit little 10 amp hour batteries in a 12 amp hour battery pack if you had the space because I was editing the uh, Metro scooter video last night uh, and it has quite a, a large similar to the Pride battery pack the little 12A8 battery pack but it's it's a lot larger inside and I was thinking could you do two uh, 10 amp hour batteries side by side wired in parallel and then wired in series <sighs> giving you 24 volts but to, if you had two amps two 10 amp hour batteries that would give you 20 amp hour so that would be 
for the amp hour, but I'm not sure if the uh, the controllers cope with the the amps. And most controllers are 40, 50 amp anyway. But I'm not sure if that makes a difference. I'm not too over traversed with those. With the uh, I, I do know the mathematical working out that you uh, it times the voltage times the amp power it gives you the the wattage output so it's uh, I think it's 12 times 12 times 12 something like that or is it 24 times 12 by 12 I'm not sure I'll have to look it up again it's not something I do on a regular basis is remember that kind of information and it's just basic degreaser to get the old stubborn stuff off as I mentioned I will put some grease in the seat strut because that articulates forward and backwards done this side I'll flip it around but yeah I'll do 40 amp hour in a 24 amp hour battery pack now, I'm not saying go out and do this but that'd be interesting to put something for me to try if I had those batteries but I don't I suppose you could do it in a larger scooter as well. I know you can increase the, the Victories or the Colts, I think they call them in Europe. Victory 10s, you can get 35 standard when you order it, or you can upgrade to 40 amp hour. And to be honest, I would recommend 40 amp hour just to get that extra length of time on it. And the 40s seem to last a lot longer than 35s. We change one or two 35s a year and scooters are a couple of three years old, something like that. Not very often, but power chairs, they tend to last three, four, five years. The 35 amp power. Not many 55s and 75s every now and again, but not very often. a little bit of space in the uh, Victory 10s. I'm just thinking if you could put 12-12 in, in parallel, that'll give you 24. You know, that's less than 35, so that wouldn't work. You'd have to do 18s or something like that. Or 22s, that'll give you 44. Two 18s wide in series and then wide in parallel to each other. But you might as well get 40 amp hour. Depends on your prices, where you get your batteries from. Again, so every dealer's different, manufacturer's pricings are different. Uh, but at least that's fixed for it. I've got another one of these coming in today. Danny didn't know I got this in. And uh, he's got the same problem as uh, his locking handle come off. It's probably done the same, it's probably worn through. I just hope it's fixable like this one. If it isn't, then unfortunately, you're looking at a whole new tiller, bottom tiller, which you would undo there. This comes off in there, you take all the wiring out the top, similar to the Go-Go's. Painting out a butt job. And you can guarantee it's not going to be cheap. She 
drives it it's into the back of a truck. I was telling her about the feather. When she's done with this one when it's run its course. Which probably be another three or four years. She keeps getting it serviced. I'll keep it running as long as I can. Key tag, very good. Keeping a track on me. I was thinking about getting those for our rentals. I'm not sure how they work. I think they work. I've seen some that work on Bluetooth. But, uh, as long as you've got Bluetooth, I mean, there's no guarantee you're going to get that. I used to have trackers on my vehicles when I had a. Uh, I had a car and a truck, the truck before the one I've got now, and we had trackers on those. Didn't make a difference in the insurance, they didn't give a crap. Didn't uh, make my premiums go down. And those guys in England, Britain, think your insurance is expensive, wait till you come over here. Jesus Christ. I nearly fell through the friggin' floor. Our truck insurance. It was 2004 truck. Not highly spent, you know. I think it cost me 13,000 when I bought it when we first moved here. And that was a mistake. But that's, a, that's another story for a different day. But anyway, yeah, and it was over $900. For six months of insurance and my car back home in Britain was uh, was a Ferrari I had a Ferrari it was an older one you know. nothing nothing stupendous not like a like the other day and I your Italia, your four, five, eights, and that sort of thing. It was just a, a three, four, eight. I liked it. It was my car, and I think I was paying two hundred and fifty pounds a year for insurance. And over here, I'm paying eighteen hundred for a truck. Absolutely crazy. And uh, I know the reason why. I was telling a friend of mine that. Uh, Pass your test in the UK is a lot more stringent in the UK than it is here. I think I think over here in the US they, they teach drivers ed in the schools. I'm not sure if they still do now. I've never done it, obviously. Wasn't born here, so I would just go by what Jenny told me and people tell me that you basically I know it's got a bit stiffer over here, not by much, but because I had to take my test over here when I moved out. You can drive for a year on your UK license, but then you have, if you're here permanently, you've got to take a test, which I did. It's a written written test similar to the UK. I nearly failed that, but I passed first time. And then you do like a a driving test, which is well, go down here, stop at this stop sign, drive over here, drive back, you're done. Which is, uh, that's not really driving, that's, that's moving. Uh, anyway, yeah, the, uh, the driving over here is not my favourite pastime. Used to be, but not now. You've got to be watching for everybody. All right, I'm just going to swap over to this cloth. It's microfiber again. And that's probably why the insurance is so high here. Yeah. You guarantee you see an accident every day. There's a 
infamous road here, highway or motorway as we say in the UK, freeway over here, infamous one here in Las Vegas called the 15. We built a car a couple of years ago, it was a nice one, and we hadn't even registered the damn thing. And we were going down to the wind, as we do, in the new car, Jenny's birthday present. And some jackass decided to run into the side of it. He was late for work, on his phone, not paying attention. We was in the uh, slow lane, because I drive like an old man. Didn't see me braking, because the traffic was stopping. Nearly ran into the back of me, decided to swerve round. Didn't realise that the cars in front in the second lane had all stopped already. So he clipped the back end of one car, swerved back into my lane while I was at the side of him, and decided to destroy the side of the car. So that was totaled out before even getting registered. And that was a pain in the ass to sort that out. The insurance company was like, oh, we need the title. Well, we ain't got a title, we haven't registered it yet. Oh, that took a year, over a year to sort that out. But eventually we got paid. So. <coughs> now we're driving the shitty old truck. We'll probably get another car at some point, but in today's economy, the way things are going, the car prices are absolutely stupid. Use. It's calmed down a bit now, but last year it was just like the dealers were just asking over uh, over the MSRP for everything because they could, because of lack of availability and people wanted cars. Um, well, that's pretty much done. Apart from these rear wheels, that I'm going to do. Uh, I'll probably do those off camera. Do you see me? Well, so I'll pull that cover and that and cap back on now and do that now. And give it its final clean up. A quick lubrication underneath. That should be good to go. Stay tuned. Alright, that's done. Lubricated everything. Give it a final polish up. Put the mat back on, check all in. good. And I'll park it here by the sign. Uh, yeah, not too bad. A few parts needed replacing and putting back on. That'll be in the main one in the armrest. So. Oh well, there you go. That's that one serviced and repaired. All ready for another couple of years of life. Hopefully it won't fail on it. I can't see anything wrong. There's a little bit of seepage from the uh, transaxle, but nothing terrible. At least you can uh, adjust the, the tiller. And uh, yeah, she's all good to go. So yeah, that's that one done. Hope you've enjoyed this little video. It's uh, pretty much the same of the usual sort of stuff that I do here. So if you like this content, consider subscribing, liking and sharing, all that good stuff. Give us a thumbs up. Leave a comment if you've got any questions. And I will, we'll try and answer it as best we can. We try and uh, spot them as soon as they get on there. So, yeah, till next time, have a good one. Drive safely. Bye now.